Welcome, welcome. I'm John Greaves III, and I'm the founder of Garage Gym Life. And today on the Garage Gym Life podcast, I am joined by the awesome Shelby from Fit as a Mama Bear. That is a blog, and it is uh, several social media platforms. So I am excited to talk to Shelby because our topic today is fitness tips for busy moms. So last week, I was talking to Matt Fleekop, and he was talking about ways to help you get rid of your dad bod and be more of a dad, be more of the hero that your kids think you are, all right? But now we don't want to leave the ladies out, and so I've got Shelby here. Plus, I got questions because there's some very serious things I need to ask uh, you know, because I've got a wife and I want to be there and be able to support her. So Shelby, thanks for joining me here today. Oh, thank you. I'm super excited. All right. So um, let's start out with a little bit of your background before we go too far into this. You are a certified strength and conditioning specialist. Right? I am. And you are also a nutrition coach. Is that correct? Uh, yep, I am. Right. I got my nutrition certification an alarming amount of years ago now, maybe nine. Oh, well, that's nine years of winning. Why is that alarming? <laughs> well, I just can't believe I've been in the game this long. I think I got my first right. personal training certification in 2009. Okay. So <laughs> it's okay. been a couple okay. of years. Well, I mean, I think that that's important, though, because too often we see people who are essentially fitness influencers and they're giving advice and they've got like five minutes of experience. So they haven't walked the road. They haven't seen the obstacles. They haven't had the pitfalls that their clients are going to have. So then when something comes up, they got to Google the answer. Right. And yeah, I'm not saying that you don't do research, <laughs> but you've actually, you know, you've, you've walked the road, you know, um, and you are very transparent about it uh, on your various social platforms. So, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on, but like I said, um, this is an interactive discussion. So anybody who is watching this and wants to jump in, feel free to ask questions. If you're watching this on the replay and you weren't able to catch this live, I know, you know, 1030 in the morning might be tough for some people. Um, you can add your questions in the comment section. And I'm going to still be monitoring the comments. And what I'll do is I will send those questions to Shelby so that she can respond to the questions. Um, additionally, Shelby has a YouTube channel. Tell them what the YouTube channel is. I do. So you can find it at Fit as a Mama Bear. YouTube All right. And so if you have a, Bear. So if you have a question and you want to just go straight to her YouTube channel, which I urge you to subscribe to, you can ask questions there as well. So feel free to say, hey, you said this on Garage Gym Life. I didn't understand, uh, you know, something like that. Okay. So um, first thing is anyone who's followed you for a while can tell that you work out. You, you, you fit. You've got all these videos. You're working out, doing all these things. Uh, but you weren't always like that. You started um, out, you were a smoker. You worked <laughs> at a restaurant, I believe. So you were like, and then you had kids. So it's like you're busy and you're unhealthy. Um what were some of the changes that you made that allow you to now live the lifestyle that you have? All of them. Um, no. <laughs> so <laughs> back in the day, I was, I worked as a restaurant manager. I yeah. was a heavy drinker and a smoker. So kind of your typical like 20 year old, I guess. Um, and it's a running, it was a running joke that I would, if I was, ever in trouble, I would stand a better chance of like standing and fighting than I would running away because I couldn't even run down the block without gasping. I couldn't carry a case of beer from the back of the house to the front just because I wasn't strong enough. Um, so this was before I had kids. I wanted to get stronger. So I made a New Year's goal to quote unquote, be healthier, which now I'm like, that is not a definable goal. Like what does healthy mean at all? But really, I just wanted to be stronger. My big swap though, is I lived off restaurant food and anything I could kind of get at a fast food chain. I did not cook. So my big healthy change to start with was to start eating yogurt and granola. I kid you not, that was the change. And not even like good yogurt and granola, but like store-bought 50 grams of sugar, yogurt and granola was my healthy change. <laughs> Obviously, we've How exciting come for your stomach. <laughs> <laughs> We've come a little bit further since then. Yeah. Um, but basically that one change kind of just started into a slew of other changes. I started going to the gym. I had no idea what to do. So I think for the first week I walked on the treadmill and watched people do things. And then I started following workouts out of a magazine. 
did that for a little bit. And every couple of months, I just started to make one more small change. So I started looking more into fitness and kind of what workouts I should be doing. I started learning more about protein and incorporating that more. And every year it just kind of became more and more. So there wasn't one big moment and there wasn't even one big change to be perfectly honest that I was like, I'm going to go all in and I'm going to do it. And I'm going to be the healthiest person ever. It just, every year I wanted more, you start feeling more confident and more energized. And when I became a mom, that was even more important to me was I wanted to be able to keep up with them. And so every, everything just kind of gradually snowballed into the way my life is today, which is like a 180 from where it was. <laughs> so that, well, the thing is that that's an impactful story. And for you, it's like, you know, you, you're, you're telling a story and it's kind of like, okay, you know, boom, here I am. Right. But to someone who's watching it, who's hearing it, who may be where they're at, they're at day one. How important is it for you to let people know that story? Like, you know, you said you start out like with not the best dietary choices. Um, you, you went to a, a gym, had no idea what you're doing. And like, well, I'll just walk on it. Okay. I know how to use this treadmill. All right. I've been walking for years. I can do that. All right. For the record, I didn't. All the buttons were very confusing. There's like a million oh, wow. settings. You're like, okay, terrible. well, this one says on. Okay. I'm going to stay on here. And this one says start. I'm going to press start. Okay. And then we'll figure it out from there. But I mean, just like the thing is that you weren't always an expert. That's kind of what I'm getting at. How important is it for you to let women especially know that they don't have to be experts to start? Well, very important. I think that's one of the one of the things that we all struggle with is where do you start? How do you start? Because it, the fitness world is super overwhelming. There is opinions absolutely everywhere. And the truth is you kind of do have to figure it out for yourself in some ways. So everyone starts somewhere, okay? Whether you are way ahead of me or where I was, <laughs> congratulations. But every little thing you do, every little swap, every little time you show up, all those things matter. So it's okay wherever you're starting, as long as you acknowledge that that's your starting point and you kind of think of where you want to go. So for me, my starting point was someone who is drinking way too much a week and smoking a pack of cigarettes every other day and I couldn't run, I couldn't carry in things, was hilarious. And it just, my energy sucked. Everything just kind of sucked in the sense of being able to do things. So that was my starting point and I owned it and I know what it is. And if that's your starting point, it's okay. All right, because everybody starts somewhere. So just acknowledge where you are, but then make a plan as to where you wanna go. I like so that. Makes sense? Yeah, I like that, especially that you, you know, you're saying, acknowledge where you are. I think that's huge. And um, so you guys are watching this. I've only asked her two questions and you guys already can see how great this interview is going to be, how impactful she's sharing a lot of knowledge. So I know you guys are going to like this. So please, if this is your first time on my channel, please hit that subscribe button for me. Please like the video. That's going to help YouTube know that they should share this video, put this video in front of other people. And that's going to help the um, it's going to help the channel grow, but it's also going to help you guys because it's going to uh, allow me to bring more guests like Shelby on. So let's get straight to the next question. What is you've got clients? Um, you've been you've had clients for so you got your your nutrition in 2009. So I think you said you've had clients for at least 10 years. Over 10 now. Over 10 yeah, years. Okay. So I think in around the third. Yeah, probably around 13 years now. I think I've been okay. training and coaching. Okay, so <laughs> that's a big enough sample size. What what would you say is the number one thing that clients struggle with when they come to you for help with their fitness journey? Okay, so it's not going to be what you think. Okay. I think the biggest thing is actually- You don't even know what I'm thinking. Let's just start <laughs> well, there. it's not that. <laughs> what so am I, I thinking? Tell me now. you probably Hold thinking up. that it's oh, time. I'm going to change really thoughts. I'm going to change thoughts because that's too easy. Okay, what am I thinking now? <laughs> you are probably thinking that people come because they're short on time. They're not sure how to fit it into a busy schedule, which is something that we all deal with. I'm a mom of three guys who runs two businesses from home. I'm a hot mess. Um, but that's actually not the biggest thing that I've noticed as to where we struggle with. The biggest thing that I've noticed people coming to me is their mindset is wrong. 
So I know it's going to throw everyone off that I say that, but here's why it's because we as moms get super overwhelmed because there's so much, so much on our plate. And so we, but we think that we need that 60 minute workout. We have to like show up and show up hard or it's not going to work. Okay. And that that's not true. So I find that once we delve into the mindset and like changing a mom's mind as showing up for 10 minutes, 30 minutes, that's okay. Getting your steps in over lifting some days, that's okay. So I think changing our mind that there are multiple avenues and ways to achieve a goal and not just you need to be in the gym four days a week for 60 minutes. If you can't make that happen, you're screwed. Like That's not a thing. So I find that the biggest challenge we face before we even get into all the fun stuff like routines and whatnot is just changing our minds that we can do it. There is time. And yes, it will take some effort, but there's not one way to be successful. So in that case, so when you first said mindset, I was like, well, <laughs> how could they be struggling with mindset if they came to you in the first place? But now that you've explained it like that, that, that makes sense, which then gives me another question to ask you, which is how do you walk the fine line? Because you, you do have to do something You do in order to, to get change. You know, if you don't do anything different from what you're doing, you're not going to get different results from what you already have. So how do you walk the fine line between encouraging your clients, especially if you can tell, hey, look, you could kind of, you could do more, all right? Because that's just human nature. How do you walk that line between encouraging your clients and then also giving them grace and recognizing, hey, maybe this just was one of those days, the, you know, the baby's sick, the 12 year old left their homework at the house, your presentation is due at work in the morning. And also, oh, by the way, you promised to help the school with the float for the fall festival. <laughs> the Oh, wait, what is, is the dog sick too? Okay, excellent. Good. You, you know what I mean? All this other stuff. And by the way, what are we having for dinner? You know what I mean? And, and so how do you balance pushing somebody when they need to be pushed and also giving them grace when you recognize, hey, you know what? Okay. It's okay. So that's a hard one because honestly, I think it's a little bit different for every person because everybody responds to encouragement differently. I'm a very routine oriented person. So I, I need those workouts. They aren't, they, they're not an option to do. They may change, but they're not an option. So when I'm coaching, a couple of things come into play. The first is reminding people that we are human but that we are in charge of our actions. So on those busy days, those days that suck, maybe you don't get your 30 minute lift in and that's fine. What can we replace it with that takes less time? Is it a five minute workout? Is it a 10 minute walk? Is it dragging kids on a sled? Okay, movement matters, all movement matters and everything adds up. So I think part of it is encouraging everyone to remember that though it may not be the activity you wanted or expected to do today, the fact that you showed up for something is still a win. It's still more than you were doing before. So that is a really important thing is our goal is to just increase showing up because showing up is consistency. Consistency is key. So part of it is encouraging people to show up in some way, not always the way that you had expected. The other part of it is getting them to acknowledge how many times things crop up. So any of us who have been in the fitness world long enough know that if you don't work out on the bad days, nothing's going to be accomplished because 70% of the days you're not going to want to work out. You're not. I don't wake up at 5 a.m. being like, I'm so excited to go lift weights. I roll out of bed, slug coffee and sit on the couch and wonder why I'm doing this for the next 10 minutes before I actually go down and get started. OK, you have to work out on bad days. It just is what it is. So I think. For people who are really, really struggling, keep a calendar for one month and see how many days you skipped because of whatever excuse. And I'm sorry, there are valid excuses, but your body doesn't understand the excuse. So it's still an excuse. You're still not doing movement. So keep a calendar. And if it adds up to the point that you are not working out 25 days of the month because they sucked and you're working out five, then maybe you do need a bit of a kick in the butt. But also remember from the grace perspective that yes, life happens. So is there a way you can work it in differently? 
just because I didn't lift today doesn't mean I wasn't active or strength training as I did something else. Okay, there's there's a pretty big spectrum there. So this is probably the best time to interject some helpful stuff for guys. Um, the first thing is uh, somebody's heard that. And what you just said, hey, you know what, uh, you need to make sure if you've it's been 25 days, you haven't worked out, you need to kick in the butt. Okay. And somebody is hearing that and they're saying, Oh, yeah, I need to encourage my wife because it's been three months since she's worked out. All right. And I'm you know, I'm gonna put myself on the big screen right here. I've been married almost 20 years. <laughs> do not do the thing that you are planning on doing. This is for your own good. All right. Do not say hey think twice before you say this at the same time we want to be able to encourage our spouse our partner um because i know i like encouragement i like it when my wife says oh you know hey i notice i don't know your back is getting broader or whatever your waist has gotten smaller i like encouragement right how do i encourage her though without let's be real if I say, uh, you, hey, you lost, did you lose weight or something like that? How do I say that without her saying, oh, you thought I was fat before? Or worse, what if she didn't lose weight? <laughs> and I'm like, you hey, don't, you weight? don't say that. Just don't. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this is a dangerous, this is a minefield here. So mm -hmm. for me personally, and this is what I really, really try to get moms into is shifting from just being in the gym for weight loss or weight purposes, we'll say, to being in the gym to get stronger and have more energy. Because personally, if my husband is like, I saw you lifted 180 pounds the other day, way to go. That's a huge ego boost to me. I love hearing those things. So I think if you are going to compliment, you can work around it on a performance goal, something you know she's been working really, really hard on. Or Say she carried the kids halfway home on a walk because we all know the toddler stops walking three minutes into oh, yeah. said walk, being oh, like, yeah. I can't believe you were able to carry so-and-so home. That's amazing. You've gotten really strong. Yeah. Those kind of compliments are ego boosts. They have nothing to do with our weight or how we look or what's going on with us in that aspect. But there's still a way to, that keeps us motivated because, hey, I did have enough energy and strength to carry home my toddler, or I was able to go sledding with them when last year I couldn't. Those are, sorry, it's Canada here. So sledding is obviously on my mind because it's winter. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> We're covered in snow. Yeah. Um, but those things are really good ways to compliment, inspire, and kind of keep your wives motivated that have nothing to do with how she looks. Looking hot is great. Like, don't get me wrong. Everyone I'm loves a I'm a fan of her. Confident. <laughs> you know. Well, and just as a female, like, it's great to feel confident Right. in your body it's just not your looks aren't the only way to do that right so i think complimenting other areas that you've noticed will go really really far to not having those fun arguments of how did you backhandedly call me fat <laughs> exactly you're just like uh, but yeah uh, so, so good job. yeah i mean that does make sense you know because you hit a pr anybody wants to be complimented yeah. hey you hit a pr good job and the pr could be you lifted something you couldn't lift before you ran longer than you could before you whatever you're cycling um at the same time i will say that one thing that i noticed this goes back to the giving grace thing is i still remember when uh i mean our kids were still really young and my wife she was basically she was on her her monthly cycle and she felt like she should she didn't feel good at all and i said well look you you need to have a i'm a big believer in deload weeks and mm -hmm. i said look you got to have a deload week anyway make this your deload week. yeah let's make this your deload week and so you know you already uh, have a um you know it's already on the calendar you know when this is going to happen right yeah. so just plan for your deload to be this week and focus on you know other things so now you don't feel the guilt of oh i'm supposed to be doing this i'm off track whatever no actually you're on track yeah. because you planned to not work out this week and well, i think that and then if if i know you're doing that then i also don't feel like 
oh, well, she's missing. Is there something? What can I do? You know, does she have too much going on? Just whatever. Because, hey, oh, I know it's part of the plan. So uh, that's just something that I know has helped my wife and I. What well, and that like on? that's one of those things where, again, especially with like females and monthly cycles, going hard all the time isn't going to happen, whether body wise or life wise. And so that's why I much prefer the focus to be on showing up some way because you do need deload deload weeks or what if the baby slept terribly last night and you are super sleep deprived trying to hit a PR on those days is silly, but that doesn't mean you can't come and do some mobility work. It doesn't yeah. mean you can't do some body weight moves. Like there are so many ways to vary it that still involve you doing something right. that gets you to your goal. So I think Oops. the more important part is to show up and to have those backup things for when it doesn't always go your way and to still feel good about that. It's okay if you did a body weight workout instead of a lifting workout, you are still doing something. So celebrate the wins. Don't just look at all the things that you're failing at because you'll go crazy. It's still a win. Now, having said that, with if people go to your YouTube channel or your I'm trying to remember if I saw it. I think I saw it on your YouTube channel, but I think you also have it on in some other places too, where the you're working out and the kids are all working out with you. And it, I mean, it looks it looks wonderful. I'm like, oh, wow. I feel like there should be like soft music playing. You know, there, there should be angels coming down from heaven with the harps and all that. Because I was like, this is this is winning right here. And I know for women who see that. How, that's got to like also kind of be potentially a thief of joy because now you feel like a failure because your kids aren't doing that. You know, you look, you see Shelby's kids, they're working out next to her and your kids got his face in the peanut butter. <laughs> 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 he's got the peanut butter attached to his face and he's trying to figure out how to get it off. You're just like, I'm a failure right now. <laughs> right? So how do you coach your clients? Cause they know what you do that's part of how they discover you. Yeah. How do you help them maybe uh, be inspired by you, but not feel that they fail because they're not you? So this is a tricky one. I have three kids. They are currently eight, six, and two. All of them have been in the gym with me since they were born, literally within days. So it's something that they grew up doing which means that they are very used to a, the fact that we go down in the morning period before school. It's not an option. That's what we do. They are confused now if we don't go down. <laughs> so it's become very, very routine to them. That doesn't mean that it isn't and has not been extremely challenging, especially in those like really the like one-year-old phase when they want to grab everything, there are rules in the gym. And so while it looks really cool in my videos that everyone's kind of doing their own thing and I can work out of the chaos, it is chaos and you do stop a lot and have to diaper change or take someone to the bathroom or get a snack. So first off, don't think that it is the perfect scenario. I personally, this works for me. I could not, I will not get to a gym. It just will not happen. And I, I have admitted that a million times. So this is what works for me. If it works better for you to leave and go to a gym, kudos. If it works better for you to do your workout when your kid is napping, do it. Okay. There's no one perfect system, but it is a learning curve to have kids in the gym. I personally love it. I think it teaches them a lot of structure. It gets, it shows them that fitness is fun and not just all about taking turns, weight. taking turns. And, uh, and they get, I have three girls. So the, I, any way I can boost their confidence. Yeah. And for me, that's getting strong is a huge win, but that may not be for you. OK, so don't think that you're a failure just because you're not doing your workout with your kids. It's really hard to work out with kids and it, it takes some it takes some time to kind of adapt to that it's and good. your system. Some people work out when their kids are napping or watching TV. If you can do that, that is fantastic. I can't do that, ironically, because I think of all the things that I have to do in those times and I get too anxious. So I have to work out in the morning with the kids. <laughs> um so I wouldn't say that anyone is a failure just because they don't do that. I will say if you have the volume on on my videos and I've left it on, you'll sheer, you'll hear the sheer chaos that is that gym while I'm trying to lift. It is insane. Like it, it's something. <laughs> my absolute fav favorite is when you were talking and your daughter was like on your lap and she got bored. She decided she's going to leave in the middle of the video. 
And then as you're reaching back to grab her, the dog walks in front of the camera. And I said, oh, yeah, there you go. There's, said, it, there's also a dog. Like, it just, said, yeah. it's, it's chaos, which, you know what? One of my biggest things that I've accomplished is learning to embrace the chaos. My workout environment is not calm. It's not something that I can like completely ignore the world and focus on my lift because the world is running all around my lift and we have to be careful. Yeah. Um, so it's like, this is just the stage of life that I'm at and everyone's going to have different stages and you just kind of have to adapt to them and find out what works for your household. In my household, we don't leave the house until mama has worked out. It like it's, it doesn't happen. I work out so that I am much more patient to do all the things. Right. So everyone in the house knows that we work out before we leave for school. So there's a couple of things I want to talk, touch on that are related to that. The, the first one is um, the mom guilt thing. We're going back to the, yeah. the mom guilt concept. How, like, how tough is that though? Like, like don't you, so now, okay. I'm like, all right. So you, they hear you say, we don't leave the house if, if, if I haven't worked out. And I know as a guy, even I know, cause I, women have told me in the conversations I've had, Hey, working out makes me a better mother. But I also understand that there's societal pressure to feel like, hey, you shouldn't be doing this thing for yourself right now. That's selfish. You should be doing, I don't know, you should be acting like a pioneer woman or something. You should be <laughs> chopping wood and sewing dresses and cooking and whatever. You know what I mean? Like at this moment. And then if you aren't doing those things or maybe you are doing those things and you're like, oh, but I should actually be working out right now. How do you fight that mom? Like, how have you personally been able to just fight back against the mom guilt? That's really what I'm asking. Like, how have you been able to overcome it or have you overcome it? I wouldn't say overcome it. I'd say mom guilt is an everyday thing. It's just always with you. Um, for me, I am a really anxious person who gets overwhelmed easily. So I'm a list person. I write out all the things that have to get done for the day. And it is really hard to, when I get up early, not to sit down and start tackling that list, but to go work out instead. Do you put it's your workout on the list? Choice. No, yes, no. Cause the workout's not like nothing will get now. Nothing gets done on the list until the workout's done. It just, because otherwise I know I'll stare at that list being like, but I still need to do my workout, but I still need like, it's a delicate balance and there's no, there's no perfect solution. Mom guilt sucks. It just, it sucks. There's always something that you need to do and should be doing always. And I know in my, per, in my head, those things that I need to do also have sub things that need to get done before those things can get done. So that's what your mind is thinking of. What I've learned from experience is that I am better able to tackle those things if I have done one thing for myself. And for me, that is working out. So if I have, if I've worked out, I can tackle all the things. We had a very random school closure today, which means all of my kids are home on a weekday in which I really need to work. Those things would have really overwhelmed me when I wasn't a morning workout person. Now mm -hmm. I know that I've done my one thing and I just, I'm more patient to deal with all the things that crop up. So for me, when it comes to feeling guilty about working out and taking time from your family, first off, I'm not taking time from my family. My family's with me while I work out and they are learning something. They are moving their bodies too, which is super important for kids. They are learning life lessons as to how to do things, how to be strong and what strong means. But also they are watching their mom put in work and show up even when she doesn't want to and she's tired and it's early morning. Okay. Those are all really important things. So I'm not taking anything from my family by me working out. I'm helping them learn something for people who don't work out with their kids. You're still not taking anything from your family because you are a better person mentally <laughs> when you work out the endorphins, you get the confidence you get. And for me, the patience that comes with knowing that I've done my workout makes me a better mom. So that's a win for my family. That's not something I'm taking away. So yes, it is a struggle, but your inner voice needs to win out on that one. All right. So I'm going to give you a chance to shout your husband out. <laughs> what is the most helpful thing he has done 
to make your fitness journey possible? Honestly, he's just my biggest supporter. Like he, he just does all the things. So he knows I'm an overwhelmed person. So if I come downstairs and the kitchen is a mess and the laundry baskets tipped over and the kids need to be fed, but it's Sunday morning and Sundays are my run morning. I'm going to look at all the, all those. I'm going to freak out as to where to start. And he's just going to come in and start cooking breakfast Mm. and be like, okay, go get your run in. We'll tidy up when you get home. Like he, he's just the, he's more calm about stuff like that. And he doesn't ask, what do you need me to do? Because that's going to overwhelm me more. And I'm going to freak out about all the things that now need to be done that I've said out loud. And now there's more things. He doesn't ask that. He just comes in and starts doing one thing. And he's like, go mm. get out of here. None of this is a big deal. Mm. So he he's always been a rock star that way. Yeah, he just he does all the things. He watches the kids so I can go kickboxing or do a class. He just swoops in and helps handle the things and doesn't question that I need to go. Like it's not, there's no permission asking, hey, can I go get my workout in? Can I go do this? He just assumes that that's what's happening comes in, takes over, and it's like, hey, go do what you need to. And it's not it's not a thing. So it's just a really big support to not have to, A, explain that I need to go do this workout. So I need time. I need you too. So there's no explanation. There's no organizing in that sense. He just, he takes over what needs to be done and shoes me out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's lovely. <laughs> so, I mean, I asked that because I know that Part of it is about knowing the person that you're with. And my wife and I have a saying now because she had some of that, like the anxiety of feeling like, hey, I need to take care of you. There's, there's some cultural pressures, too, because my wife is of Latin descent. So she's uh, she's uh, Puerto Rican. And so there's that cultural thing. You're supposed to do whatever. And so the I still remember. We start. I don't re- really remember who started saying it, but now we have a thing where it's like, "Hey, that's why there are two of us," nice. and and you just it doesn't matter. And it's the same thing. So I came home the other day, and she had brought the trash back from the curb, and I said, "Oh man, I was going downstairs to get it," because I found out when I went downstairs to get it. I came home and I was rushing to get inside, put all my stuff down, turn around, and I go back down to get the trash, and she had gone outside and gotten the trash, and, and it was cold, and she hates the cold. So I was like, oh, I was going to get it, right? And she said, that's why there are two of us. No, oh, I love it. And I said, and so, but I also realized that if I don't receive that when she does things for me, it's harder for her to receive it when I say to her, hey, I got the dishes, go ahead, get your workout. Yeah. You know? And I asked that question, though, because men like to have like a task. Like, hey, I can, this is something tangible I know I can do. And so any ladies who are watching this, don't feel guilty. Don't feel like we're upset with you. Like, literally, you're helping us out. If you say, hey, uh, I remember my wife um, said to me, um, hey, I'm going downstairs uh, to work out. Can you turn off the crock pot when it goes off? And I said, yeah, sure. That's a simple thing. I mean, listen, literally turn it to off. <laughs> listen and then turn it to off. <laughs> But that saved her from having to constantly come upstairs because you and can't check. get a crockpot downstairs. Yeah. Yeah. From having to come upstairs and check with you to ruin her workout. So I think that that's something that it goes back to, you know, basically what makes a marriage work anyway, which is cooperation and teamwork. But yeah. I think that was an important thing. And uh, we have people who are watching right now. So there's like 20 of you watching. So please, I want to get questions from you guys. I don't want to monopolize this. This isn't just me asking questions of Shelby. If you guys have questions or ladies, if you have a question, you're like, hey, how can I get my husband to be a little bit more helpful or whatever so I can do these things? You know, Shelby's got tips for those too. If you want to, I don't know, a recipe or something, you know, (laughs) ask whatever she's got all that kind of stuff so please don't hesitate to put it in the chat or like i said if you're watching on replay just drop a comment and and we'll be uh sure to address it um so now let's go to so uh, i mentioned that you have multiple social media platforms yeah all of them is your content (laughs) the same on all of them because i i've noticed some differences right 
So if somebody decides, hey, I'm going to follow Fit as a Mama Bear everywhere. I'm going to go to the blog. I'm going to go to TikTok. I'm going to go to Twitter. I'm going to go to Instagram. I'm going to go to YouTube. What are they going to get? Okay. Um, from, and then you have a newsletter too, right? I have all the things. <laughs> you have all the things. Okay. So like, because these are all resources. So what is it that somebody is going to get from TikTok versus say Twitter? Okay, so on the blog, which is fitismamabear.com, is where everything's hosted. So you are going to get all of my recipes there. I'm obviously a high protein recipe blogger. I'm dairy free and gluten free. Um, so they are dairy free and gluten free recipes. So all of my recipes, there's a ton of home workouts on the blog. There's also links to my signature at home workout program, the smash program, and just lifestyle tips on how to make it all work. So that's all hosted on the blog. On Twitter, which would be my most popular platform, you're gonna get. I want to. I'm say jealous one. of your Twitter followers. Okay, I thought I was Twitter, like, oh. Twitter's my jam. Um, well, Twitter hold on. So I reached out where... to you and you answered me. I said, "Oh, she she spoke to me. She yeah, answered no. me." And I I try to answer almost everyone <laughs> on Twitter. It's funny because a lot of people say that, and I'm so like mind boggled that I wouldn't. But they're like, "You you have quite a few followers." So I'm like. You got people okay. asking you for advice, like, how can I grow my followers like you? Yeah. I, and the thing is, <laughs> is I don't, I feel like I don't try on Twitter, which sounds really bad. I just, Twitter's fun for me. So I feel like on Twitter, you will get a lot of inspiration. You get the most real version of me, to be mm. honest. You get a lot of clips of my personal workouts from the morning featuring all of the chaos and things that I'm working on right now. There's a lot of motivational stuff about just healthy swaps and how to make it all work. Um, and you just get kind of more of my life on Twitter and the fitness part. Instagram is a little more curated. So every week I do put out an at home weekly workout as well as a high protein recipe. So that's basically what you're getting on my Instagram. Facebook is a little bit of both to be perfectly honest. You will get a lot of recipes on there, but I do try to link up some workouts. So you have some information there too. My newsletter, there is a newsletter that goes out with a weekly workout every week, as well as one with uh, the newest recipe, whatever is out that week. Um, what else? TikTok. I don't use TikTok a whole lot, to be honest, because sometimes there's just too many. Is that things. where the blooper reel is? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> God, that would be Instagram stories where I'm like, what happened here? Gotcha. Um, so TikTok, you can find me, but I don't put out a whole lot on there. YouTube. There's a lot of follow along workouts. So I know a lot of people prefer the actual like follow along. They want to do it with you kind of thing. So there are a ton of workouts on there that break down in 10 minutes, 20 minutes by equipment, by body part. And then you do have a lot of like informational videos on there, what to eat before and after a workout, all that kind of stuff. So you can find that on my YouTube channel. I do try to appear in a lot of places, um, which is kind of hilarious to be honest, but yeah. So I guess it depends on what you really want from me, but the blog is where everything is hosted. So hit that up first and then go from there is normally a good avenue. So you can go to YouTube and you can turn on a video and you say, okay, I got 30 minutes and you can put on the video and just follow the video. It's got yeah. warm up. It's warm up, workout, cool down, all that stuff is. Yeah, I went video. through. Uh, I think I took 2020 and filmed about 40 actual full okay. length workouts, and they're broken down. Yeah, by body part, by equipment, by all the things. Um, so you can find those on there. Okay. Now you mentioned your blog, and one of the things that when I was looking at your blog and your social media, the two things, and you even brought it up here, but there are two themes that I constantly see repeated. Number one is taking back control. And number two is short workouts. So yeah. unpack for me why those two things are so important. I kind of have an idea why the taking back control thing, it resonates with you because you said you do you do feel anxious and overwhelmed. Yeah. So taking back control is important. But why, why do you think that those, why are those two things so impactful? So with control, I think as moms, we naturally feel like so much is out of our control. Okay. Like we, we get pregnant and honestly, pregnancy is just (laughs) a whole thing and your body changes and none of that you can control and you can't control how your body feels and looks postpartum. You can't control kids getting sick and just all the things kind of add up and you feel really out of control. So I feel like fitness, being active, working out is something you can control. You can control 
whether or not you show up. You can control how your mind perceives fitness and what it is to you. So those things are really important to me. I need to be in control of something and fitness is that thing. It's a thing where the results come based on how much work I put in. It is fully up to me. Okay. And that's a really empowering thing when you go through the slew of motherhood of things that you can't control. Okay. So if you are that overwhelmed, anxious person, fitness is something that the ball is in your court. So make it what you need it to be. Okay. In terms of short workouts, I'm a mom of three. Okay. It is really, really busy and I cannot spend 60 to 90 minutes in the gym a day. For me, that would be great. I love the gym. It's awesome. And I used to do that pre-kids and that's fantastic too, but that's not a reality now. And asking moms to spend 60 full minutes in the gym four or five days a week is just unrealistic. And this is how we get set up for failure is with unrealistic expectations. So short workouts can be just as effective as longer workouts, depending on your goals and depending on the kind of workout it is. You've heard me say I'm a big fan of showing up. Okay. So showing up counts, whether that is for a 10 minute workout or a 30 minute workout. For myself personally, my workouts range from 20 to 40 minutes, depending on the day. They are very strength training based. So you're looking at barbells, calisthenics, dumbbells, that kind of thing. I'm not a big hit workout person um, just from an enjoyment perspective, but a lot of people that works for it doesn't matter. OK, so find the style of workout that suits you, but know that you don't need to be in the gym for 60 minutes. The biggest way to achieve fitness goals is to be consistent. So I, as a coach, I would rather you show up consistently for 20 minute workouts every single week than I would for three out of 30 workouts. But they were 60 minutes long. It just doesn't make sense. OK, if 20 minutes is all you have right now, if that is all your lifestyle can handle, if 10 minutes is all that you have, put them to good use and just stay consistent with them. OK, shorter workouts can add up to really big results. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um. So two more questions. Uh, first thing is about the workouts, because um, you mentioned that you have different workouts broken up by body part. Do you have them broken up by time? I do. So on my YouTube channel, they are broken up by it's time. Like, okay, this is a 10 minute workout. So I can, yeah, they know, hey, okay, YouTube's going to show me an ad. All right. After I go through that 30 seconds, boom, I can and, get it done. Okay. And what I found with uh, my signature program, which is the Smash Fit for Life, is that 20 minutes is like a good sweet spot for moms. So it's one of the, it's a time frame in which you can normally squeeze it in to a busy day. You can get up early and go for 20 minutes. Any longer than that, and it becomes a thing, both in yeah. our minds and just organizing children around, trying to get them to do something for 30 minutes, etc. You can work out for less than 20 minutes. I just find 20 minutes a really good sweet spot to stay consistent with while still seeing really, really good results. So if you are on the fence as to like what workout duration should I start with, if you have that option, don't think that you need 45 minute workouts. That's great. If you can do them, like hats off to you. Just don't think that it's a necessity to get stronger. Okay. Use what you have. Just use it effectively. Right. Uh, you made me laugh when you said the, no. uh, the 20 minute workouts. <laughs> well, no, because I was just thinking, I said, well, 20 minutes. So let's say like you told your kids to be quiet and stay downstairs, right? <laughs> well, 20 minutes is about the length of time a mom can handle before you like, okay, I don't hear the kids. You're like, well, yeah. So to me, I'm like, well, you told them to be quiet. Yeah, but they don't do that. So why are they so quiet? Now you got to go check on them. <laughs> like 20 minutes is the max you can handle. Like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna check on them. This is, this is going too well. <laughs> Pretty much. And it depends, like, which is why I like them in the gym. Um, yeah. Because if, if I'm in the gym and they're upstairs, there's that part of me that will come up between sets and be like, what you doing? Just uh, everyone's uh, alive and good, right? Yeah, um, exactly. So I actually prefer the chaos in the gym because at least I know what's going on. <laughs> you know what they are, yeah. And like I said, to be honest with you, so my youngest son, my daughter is uh, eight, but my youngest son is 19. My oldest son is 27. So when they were, they all started working out uh, when they were very young. I mean, like I'm talking five years old, right? And that's where I got the thing about waiting your turn, 
because I mean, eventually there were four of them in the gym with me. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it's easy to, you know, we only have one power rack, so we can't all be using certain, we can't all be doing certain things at, at once. So, okay, we're going to take turns. But then also just as important, they started to learn to respect other people's time because, you know, uh, I was competing in powerlifting at the time and my kids, they don't care about that. They'll, I'm at the bottom of a squat. Here they come. Hey, daddy, can I have the, all right, all right. so we had to come up with a cue like, Hey, if I'm going to, if I'm about to start my set, it's daddy's turn which means wait, don't ask me anything. Also stay out of the way. So you don't, don't ask so don't me even, anything. That's yeah. So I don't even have to worry about, because people, uh, that is a real fear. People say, well, what if I drop something on the kids or yep. just whatever? So if I'm deadlifting, you know, I don't want to have to worry that, you know, I'm going to drop this barbell on my son or my daughter, or whatever. So if I say, if they say they know now, I mean, they're obviously adults now, but most of them, but they knew, Hey, if, if it's daddy's turn, you stay off the deadlift platform. And in fact, you give him space. There's a perimeter. In fact, don't do anything dangerous because if I see you doing something dangerous, that's not even related to me. Yeah, I'm going to lose focus. So they instead they started, I didn't even tell them to do this, but then they started counting. So maybe I'm benching. So then they're counting my reps. Yep. And I, people laugh, but I taught my kids math by lifting weights with them. Yeah. Cause you got to add the plates. Yeah. yeah. So there were so many things that helped them when they got to school, you know, not just PE, you would think it's just PE, but there are a lot of things that help them in a socialization sense uh, when they got to school. So I, I really love, I mean, when I say that I was watching the videos and I'm, I'm laughing at the dog walking from the camera cause I've been there, but I also, <laughs> I'm smiling at watching your girls working out with you because I just think those things are really cool. It's honestly like I, I love having them in the gym. Same thing. We have rules like we where my squat rack is. We have rubber mats. So the rule yeah. is no one's allowed on the mat if the bar is moving. Um, and obviously certain things change depending on their ages. Like the youngest right. is two and a half now. So it's a little bit easier. But for example, when they're one, I don't do a I don't barbell bench press because I can't see beside me. Right. So right. if they're crawling, that kind of thing. So you, there's been a lot of adapting as their ages, yeah. but there's hundred percent, there are gym rules, but the no talking one made me laugh because we've, they have learned that the hard way when I'm at like the bottom set of ring dips. And one of them's like, mom, do you know? And I'm like, I can't, I'm not at like, I can't answer questions right yeah. now. <laughs> but you know, even that, even that's cool because, um, when I would go to powerlifting meets, I was competing in powerlifting. And when I go to powerlifting meet, there are always distractions. Something always goes yeah. wrong and you have to be able to like block it out and go. Right. And I found that I was actually able to do that. You would have mastered that. <laughs> I'm used to being able to say, you know, Hey daddy, can we go, Hey, can we go play with our friend or whatever? Right. I'm like, one second is my turn. Do my set. And they know as soon as I rack the bar, I'm going to come right back to whatever Same. it was that we're talking about. Right. So that actually helped me. As an athlete, as a strength athlete, yeah. So there are benefits both ways. I find um, in in doing that, like you said, it's really, really rewarding. So all that sounds great for where we are, but somebody watching this either right now or ten years from now is where you were when you started. I want you to take a minute and talk to that person like you're talking to your past self. Tell them whatever you wish somebody had told you the day before you got started. Strength training is key, whether that is with calisthenics, dumbbells, or barbells. That is what is going to get you stronger, leaner, and more confident. So if it comes down to prioritizing cardio over strength training, prioritize strength training. Cardio has its place too, but prioritize getting stronger would be the biggest thing. Get out of your mind. Okay. Stop thinking that something has to be a certain way because I have been around the block enough to know now that there are so many different ways to achieve a goal and there's not one perfect system. You are always going to be adapting just because the upper lower split works for you right now. Doesn't mean that it is going to work in 
six months when your lifestyle changes or you become adjusted to it. Lastly, always push yourself. Okay. So it's easy to kind of get into your groove and stay there, but no one is coming to push you. You need to push yourself. You need to want to achieve something, whether that's a PR or running a certain distance or any of those things, but you, you need to push yourself. Lastly, the gym and working out is about so much more than how your body looks. Okay. So yes, it is awesome to feel strong and look stronger, but the mental benefits from it are even better. So just the mental offload, it helps you de-stress. It helps you deal with anxiety. It helps you be more patient. So stop thinking that the gym is just for a smaller waist because looking hot will come. If you strength train and keep on track, the body stuff tends to fall into place, but the mental stuff, that's what's going to keep you going because it just feels too damn good. Oh yeah. We, uh, my friends and I had a saying, uh, back when I worked in a public gym back in the 20th century. And, uh, we said, uh, your body looks like what you do with it. And, uh, and so, yeah, if you, and I've heard it said other ways too, like you train for function and form will follow and all that, but it's like, Hey, you know, your body looks like what you do with it. Um, so we do have one question. My mom has entered the chat. My mom watches our watches my video. So uh, she said, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so she said, congratulations on your accomplishments. And she wants to know if you if the recipes that you share are made up by you, and um, are they recipes for all meals, including snacks? So ninety percent of the recipes on the blog are made up by me messing around in my kitchen. You can thank my girls for being very open-minded to trying a ton of mistakes because it turns out testing recipes actually takes a really long time to get them right. Um, and they have eaten all sorts of flat brownies and random sticky puddings and things that were burnt that I refused to throw out because food is expensive. So I'm like, we're going to make it something. Um, so yes, they are all made by me, save for a handful of them. There are recipes for breakfast, dinner, snacks, you will notice on the blog that I have a sweet tooth. Um, there are a lot of chocolate recipes that I've transformed into protein desserts because I really like food <laughs> and I really like chocolate. So I think that in some ways you can kind of have the best of both worlds and you don't just have to eat chicken and rice all of the time. So you will find a lot of high protein snacks and indulgent protein desserts. There's a lot of donuts and brownies on the blog. Um, but yeah, they are all made by me and tested by me. I will fully admit that there are typos because while I proofread, I'm a hot mess when it comes to typos. Typos just kill me. So if you spot one of those, feel free to let me know. And I apologize in advance for the ones that you will probably find. But there you will find a lot of delicious recipes on there. All right. So if somebody wants to get in touch with you, they want to find out more about what you do. Where do you want them to go? Is it as uh, better to go to fit as a mama bear.com. Do you want them to go to your YouTube? Go they can basically find everything, go to the website, right? Yeah. So you can find everything and links to my YouTube right on my website there. So go to fit as mama bear.com. You are always feel free to reach out on any social platform. I do monitor them obviously and reply to everyone as you <laughs> found out. So if you have a direct question, feel free to go to the contact page on fit or hit me up through Instagram or Twitter. I'm always around to answer questions. Um, yeah. So awesome. So yeah, go to Twitter definitely and, <laughs> and join, make it 20,001 or she might have 30,000 by now. I wouldn't pay attention. Um, <laughs> So, hey, thank you guys for watching this. And thank you so much to Teresa Burkett. She was my guest a couple of weeks ago. And Teresa sent a wonderful mug for my mom. So mommy didn't know about that. So now you just heard that, mommy. So Teresa sent you a mug and I just got it out of the mailbox. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll get that to you. But so thank you to her. I, I want to make sure I gave her a shout out. Thank you for being here, Shelby, and, uh, and sharing your wisdom, your, you know, your experience and expertise with us. I appreciate that. Next week, I'm going to be joined by Pia uh, Marangoni. I hope I said that correctly, but Pia is with Fiercely Fueled Nutrition. And so she's going to be talking about fueling yourself as an athlete. You guys do not want to miss it. It's also going to be on Thursdays 
So it's going to be on Thursday at uh, 1030 again. So you guys can uh, actually find the link as soon as this video is over. But it'll be right here on my YouTube channel. If you're watching on Twitter, or if you're watching on Facebook, just come to my YouTube channel and you guys will uh, Garage Gym Life and you guys will be able to find that link because I want to see you guys there and I want to hear from you guys as well. Also, if you've watched this entire thing, you're obviously a fan of what I do. So please click that shopping link that is down in the corner of this video, because if you just click on it, you will be able to support the channel. It help, makes it possible for me to maintain my equipment and do the interviews that I do um, with people like Shelby. So once again, hope this was helpful. You guys have an awesome, excellent day.